I was the first photographer to shoot the D600, period. What I realized when I looked at the different you know, aspects of the camera, at, at the, the technical specs, I realized that it was like an amazing all-round camera. If you were gonna buy one single camera and you love nature photography, I think the D600 would be it because it's great for large files, 24 megapixels, perfect landscapes and detail and aerials, but it still does really well with wildlife. For me, it's so much about the place, wilderness, that it's really important for me to link the animals with, with the location because they depend on their habitat, they depend on that landscape, and so I want to show them interact, I want to show them as part of it. And so for me, a really wonderful photograph is where you see the animal and the landscape that it lives in. And that's, I think, when photography becomes really powerful. We were photographing and filming at minus 35. Everything becomes a little slower, like the display and so on, but the cameras held up. We didn't have any issues. It really worked fine. I mean, what people often make a mistake is they always try to keep the cameras warm. No, I take the cameras outside and then they're frozen, minus 20, minus 30 degrees, and they stay frozen the whole time I'm out there. Time lapse even worked at minus 35 degrees. Cameras, of course, drain a little faster, but if you put the batteries actually in a plastic bag and inside when you're not using them, but you definitely leave the cameras outside. They're completely frozen for the entire shoot for days at the time. Because when you take them inside, condensation happens and then the shoot is over.